Gundam Wing Review, episodes 30 through 33. Catra and Hero don't really mesh, so they split up. Hero fights alongside the Trey's faction of Oz, while Catra wanders into this little town that's being oppressed by the Romafeller Oz. Turns out these two groups are battling and the town is kind of stuck in the middle. Hero is going to fight to his last breath, even after the mobile dolls show up, but then Catra hears about the Sank Kingdom and he realizes that their efforts should be directed towards protecting them. Noin shows up just in time to back them up and gives Hiro extra incentive to come along by telling him that they have his Gundam. So they get to the Sank Kingdom, where Relina is educating the daughters of pacifist leaders about the importance of peace. And Dorothy is there too, being a nutcase. The girls are so excited to have two new boy classmates, Hiro and Katra. Dorothy tries to provoke Hiro into revealing who he actually is, but he doesn't bite. All this time, Trey's faction soldiers are being pushed into Sank Kingdom territory by the Romafeller Oz guys so that they can attack and have an excuse to destroy the Sank Kingdom even though they're allies. Hero gets in his Gundam and goes to the Trace faction guys and convinces them to live long enough to fight against Romafeller Oz to protect the Sank Kingdom. So they fight, it works out, and Relina agrees that maybe it's important to have a small defense force. Meanwhile, during all of this, Duo is in a space colony with Hildy, working to finish his new Gundam. Then this crazy guy from Romafeller Oz named Trant comes along and forces him to run tests inside the Zero System. He believes that he can pretty much take over Oz and win all battles as long as he can perfect the Zero System without that whole hallucination part. He needs more data, so Duo starts running the tests, but of course, he starts hallucinating. Then Tuberoff shows up, condemning Trant and all of his research, but Trant is obsessed. Hildy rescues Duo, who gets into his Gundam, takes out Trant, because he was dangerous to everyone. Anyway, enough of that. Back to the Sank Kingdom. Relina is invited to a conference with the Romafeller guys, but it turns out that it's just an attempt at a gotcha. Miliardo is fighting as Zex again, but Relina just says, no, that's not my brother, that's not Miliardo. So they try to kill her, but thankfully Kadra and Noin show up and rescue her. At the same time, Hero has gone to Luxembourg to fight Romafeller there, because they are fighting against Luxembourg now, apparently. It seems to be everyone against Romafeller, but they have mobile dolls, so it looks as though they're going to win. Then Hero gets a message from Trace, telling him to do his best. All in all, to put it simply, I was not a huge fan of this chunk of episodes. Mostly because I'm not a huge fan of Relina, and everyone just goes around falling over themselves trying to compliment her. I honestly believe that most of my problems with this show would go away if Relina had never been introduced. I want more focus on the actions and the interesting people in the show rather than Relina's beliefs and dreams. Okay, so there's this character named Dorothy, who I firmly hated for about five minutes. But then I came around and I saw that everything about her was totally brilliant. Because if you look at her as Relina's foil, then it makes sense. However, I happen to believe that everything she says is totally sarcastic. Because I can't handle a fangirl on that level, I have to believe that she's a bitingly bitter girl who gets her rocks off on inflating Relina's ego. You can tell that she makes Relina uncomfortable, and to be totally honest, when I'm not laughing at Dorothy, I am squirming a little bit. Again, I think it's just because I honestly can't tell if she's being sincere or completely sarcastic. Either way, she's nuts and has easily the most distracting eyebrows in the entire show. And that's saying a lot because this show has a lot of distracting eyebrows. Okay, that was weird because I talked about something else besides the five pilots first. Anyway, we can skip over Troa and Wu Fei because they weren't in these episodes. Let's start with Duo, because his random episode kind of seemed like a distraction from the task. I mean, I guess it was there to remind us that other stuff is going on, and the Zero system is still an issue that's gonna come back. But all around, it kind of just felt invasive, and directed us away from the Sank Kingdom stuff, especially because we went right back to the Sank Kingdom after the episode. I think it was pretty cute when Hildy suddenly appeared, and it was pretty well established that they were working together. They act so married! and they're on the same wavelength, which is good. Because Duo hasn't really meshed well with anyone as far as a let's be friends kind of relationship. He was no good with Hiro and hilariously incompatible with Mufei. He 
was good with Catra, I guess, but I'm glad he's with Hildy now. They were being pretty adorable. So Catra found out about the Sanka Kingdom, and the amount of shines in his eyes increased dramatically. Because obviously he needed to go there. All this time, Catra has been fighting because he's good at it and fighting in the name of peace. But now, he gets to fight in the name of not fighting. That's great for him, because he doesn't have to be on a side. He just has to protect the people who need protection. Plus, Relina and Noin have made the promise that they're going to search for Troa, because they believe he's still alive. Duh. If only Catra had figured out the Senka Kingdom thing earlier, then maybe we could have been spared that mental breakdown. My only thing is that I want to see him go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Dorothy. She challenged Hero to a fencing match in order to provoke him, but I think just having a conversation with Catra would be absolutely fascinating. Thus far, Catra hasn't really interacted with anyone besides Noin. Considering he was brought up by a pacifist family, I think he'll be a very good asset to the Peacecraft family, but Relina's focusing all of her attention on Hero, who just continues to lie to her face every time he talks to her. She asks him not to leave without telling her first, and he promises, and basically, while she's still on campus, he leaves. I think this show is trying to present a certain feeling about these two as a couple, but they're not doing a very good job. I think what they're going for is Hero doesn't respect, care about, or listen to anyone except Relina. But that is not being successfully conveyed. Yes, Hero does often do things for Relina that would normally require a mission from someone much higher up. But he does not believe that pacifism can be used to fix anything except in an unrealistic an idealistic world. And he constantly does whatever the hell he wants, even if he just finished telling Relina that he wouldn't do that thing. And maybe you could say that he cares about her to a degree, because he has saved her life a bunch of times. But I think that if he was off doing something else, and she got killed while he wasn't around, he'd get over it pretty quickly. Kinda like, oh man, I saved her a bunch of times, I didn't want her to die. Anyway. I'm not really charmed by their weird interactions. Catherine and Troa have more chemistry, and Duo and Hildy definitely have more chemistry. Okay, and now Meliardo is Zex again, but the whole reason he stopped being Zex is because Zex was supposedly killed, right? Isn't that why it worked? Isn't that why he was able to become Meliardo? But anyway, this reversion back to Zex kind of makes me feel like the evolution into Meliardo happened too early in the series. I think that this should have been saved for later, so that it could have happened and he could have stayed that way. And now he's gotten so good at piloting the tall geese that it's actually not good enough for him anymore. So what does that mean we can expect from Zex slash Meliardo? Clearly he's too into this fight thing to ever actually fully become Meliardo. He was set up to be a passionate character with that whole fall from Oz thing when he obsessively wanted to fight against Hero. So, clearly he needs a new mobile suit. Maybe he'll be the guy who can handle the Zero system. But while we're on the subject of new mobile suits, Trey's is lurking around. Apparently he has one, but I really don't know if I'm supposed to like or hate this guy, and it's very confusing. Just a few episodes ago, he was the enemy, and now he's rooting for the pilots to win. He and Dorothy have similar views about the beauty of soldiers fighting to the death and then dying in a war. They should collaborate, or actually, maybe they should be as far apart from each other as possible. Anywho, that's it for this chunk of episodes. I could get behind this direction with the Sank Kingdom that the show is taking if it didn't have so much Relina. She seriously just ruins it for me, mostly because she's such a hypocrite. My next Gundam Wing video will be just episode 34. Then I will examine episodes 35 through 38. I hope the next episodes have less politics and more giant robot suit fighting. And woofay. See you next time. Bye! Meanwhile, during all of this, Hero- no, not Hero. Considering he was brought up by a pacifist family, I think he's a- Considering he was brought up by a pacifist family, I think he'll turn out to be a pretty good asset to the Peacecraft family, but Hero's focusing... No. <sighs>